Hi, Josh Zaring, Jay Zaring Studios. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to show you a quick way to keep all of your files for your thumbnails basically in one, one project. And for Photoshop users, that's a PSD file. And in this video, I show you how I, I basically keep things consistent, like uh, the photo of myself for my vlog is always to the left-hand side of the thumbnail. The title of the vlog is always in the upper portion and the text is always the same font. And I always zoom out to make sure it's legible as a small thumbnail, because that's the most important thing that you, you know, have a flashy thumbnail, but you gotta be able to read it. This is a, a guideline because sometimes it was taking me way too long to make my thumbnail. So I created a template and started listening to all these videos that say about being consistent on your thumbnail and basically not having the same picture every single video, but having a similar look. So this is what I came up with. You can see here, I have this blue thing. It's like semi-transparent. I have it at 41%. And then obviously the Jay Zaring vlog and then the episode, which I change each episode. And then down here we have the text, which I usually change the color and the size, depending on how long my title is. And then I've been trying to keep the photo of myself to the left. So the last couple episodes of the vlog, it's been a lot more consistent and definitely more recognizable as, you know, as my brand or, you know, that's my video, you know, that's more recognizable to people that are actually looking for your video. You don't want to, you don't want to change it up too much. So I'm going to get rid of this because this is episode 16 here and go up to episode, change that. Just change it to six, real, real easy. And this week it is called Portraits at Charles Park. So I'm gonna go down to my text, change that. Portraits, go down to the next one. I'm not worried about size right now because I still gotta figure that out. At, maybe I'll put the at symbol there. Yeah, there we go. Charles Park. So then I'm gonna go down to the vintage cameras thing, just hide that, because I don't need that this week. And go back. And sometimes it's easier for me to just, instead of changing the text size, to just select it and bring it down until I think it's the right size. Sometimes it's a little quicker this way. And another thing I like to do is, uh, you see there's a same size border the whole way around here. The way I do that is I made a little alignment guide here and you can see that lines up fairly well with it there. So I'm gonna move this to accommodate that guide there. And that's another thing with being consistent. Uh, all, my, all my spacing around my borders is always the same. I always use uh, the Impact. It just seems to be the best font to stick out in a tiny thumbnail. I use Impact for the font and I usually use all caps because to me it just looks uh, more neat. So now I'm gonna change the size here you don't want it, definitely don't want it too small. But this week I have some things I want to throw in here. So another thing is I, w I have a tendency to want to put the text close together. But when you zoom out, uh, it's good to zoom out how people are actually going to see it on their phones. If you can't read it that small, then you need to make your text bigger and maybe separate a little more. I think that's, that's pretty good. Now I'm not going to use the same thing here. This week I think I was leaning more towards using style. I'm going to have to adjust this a little bit. I normally don't do this much to the text, but I th thought I'd make it look, look all puffy and glassy this, this week. I find that the more you do to the text on a thumbnail, the harder it is to read. Uh, sometimes it's good to just put a, an outline around it and call it a day. All in all, this one is going to be a little bit more complex than my usual. I have a studio portraits thing here. And I may use one with the camera. That would kind of make sense. Yeah, there we go. And I do this ahead of time. This is another huge time saver to just take a, a load of photos of yourself. Because I keep shaving my beard, I have to have a folder of each of different poses because it would look stupid if you're watching the video and I have a beard and the thumbnail, I don't have a beard. So just make sure there you have, you know, it, make sure, just make sure it makes sense. 
I have this thing with every week I have to be on the left hand side here. Now what I usually do is copy, create a new layer. What I usually do is copy the color. Um, it doesn't really have to be a bright color. That's why I kind of keep sticking with gray, which is another time saver there. It doesn't have to be a bright color. That's the, not the point. I always use very colorful text. I'll switch out. I'll select a color here to just accent near the end with a with kind of a gradient. And then what I do is I just go up here and erase to blend it. Not with, not that large though. And I just go up here and go like this. And actually I'm going to hide all the text here. You can put these in folders to make it a little less irritating to navigate because you end up, you do end up with a lot of layers and there that is. There's my background. Let's get down through here, turn them all back on, turn that off for now. Portraits at Charles Park. Even though I have it down to a system here, it still involves a lot of forethought and you know, you don't want it to look too stupid. You don't want it to look too boring. This is my thing, me with the sunglasses and I'm just kind of sticking with it and made sure I put a camera on it this week because it's portraits at Charles Park. So now what I want to do, this is something I don't normally do. I usually just leave it at the text and my mug shot and call it a day, but there's photos here. So I'm going to use some of the photos. So I'm going to start with this one, control T. Make sure it's maintaining the aspect ratio. And I'm just going to randomly put that somewhere and randomly tilt it. Control T. And then what I'm going to do, go to layer styles. First I want to drop, sh or drop shadow and stroke because I'm going to make this, okay, put it on the inside. I'm going to make this just look like a printed photo with a border and my drop shadow. I'm definitely going to spread that out a little bit. And that's pretty much it for that. Now here's another time saver. Copy layer style, select your other three photos, paste layer style. Then all you have to do is go through and adjust. That's my thumbnail for the Jay Zaring vlog episode 16. And I also have the same type of deal going on with my tutorials. And you probably see the thing uh, on the left side or on the right side, uh, the red with my logo. Uh, that's basically what I'm doing with this. The same, same kind of thing, consistent, some kind of thing that remains the same basically every, every single video. And then I like to keep my text consistent. For the tutorials, however, you know, there's always a different thing that I, I have here. So I can't really, I'm not really going to put my, my face on every single tutorial. You see that enough in, in the tutorial itself. But uh, I hope that gives you a little bit of insight. Maybe, maybe some of this helped you speed up your workflow. Uh, this is a necessary evil for anybody on YouTube or Vimeo, whatever platform you chose to do your videos with. Uh, it's much better to actually create the... Uh, the thumbnails than to let one of the frames do the job for you because this is much better advertising than just the thumbnail of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped uh, save you a little bit of time and aggravation. Uh, maybe just make your thumbnails look a little bit better. Uh, basically the key there is not to overthink it and I, whether you post daily, weekly, monthly, it's still a huge time saver and it keeps things looking good and it keeps your brand or your you know, your personality recognizable easily and quickly. Thanks for watching. Keep creating and keep it awesome. Join me on patreon.com to take part in special rewards like priority question and answer, Lightroom and Photoshop presets and actions, BTS videos and photos, previews for upcoming content and even suggest ideas for tutorials. And also you have the option of being credited for your support of Jay Zaring Studios, which is really cool. Check it out at patreon.com slash jzaring.